a, a writer on uh, education matters and uh, the founder of the Local Schools Network. Fiona Miller. Thank you. The first thing I want to say is I'm here in solidarity with the parents and the governors and the teachers at Downhills. Because when I read Warwick Mansell's article in The Guardian, I thought, that is my school. I didn't go to this school, but my children went to a school very similar to this one. And it feels like I'm in the same school hall. And our school was named and changed in the early 1990s by the, uh, one of the early Ofsted inspections. And I, mean, I have to say that even Thatcher didn't create anything as horrible as the Forced Academy, but it was a very unpleasant experience. And our school turned itself around with a supportive governing body, great governors, brilliant parents, a great local authority, and we became a good school. So to the gentleman over there, I don't even know if he's still here, I just want to say to him, you do not need to be an academy to become a better school, even if you've been through a death. goes into it, but it can be done. And the second reason I'm here really is I want to salute you for, for, for really <coughs> exposing the government's sheer intellectual dishonesty. And I think you've really got them rattled. It's fantastic. I mean, I saw Goat's speech last week and I thought he looked really rattled there. He was very shrill and hysterical. I read it in the article of the standard today. Totally different tone, clearly trying to look like, you know, you don't need to be scared of us, we're really very nice people. So you have got them rattled. And the reason you've got them rattled is you've exposed three or four very important things. The first one is that they have created this false polarity between good academies and free schools, bad local authority schools. And that simply doesn't exist. Everywhere in the world where this experiment has been tried, it hasn't really worked. Go to America, go to Sweden. What you find is that schools succeed, but they succeed by throwing out all the difficult kids, or they take in the best kids to start with. Or some schools succeed at the expense of others. Look at the league tables, they're going to come out very, very soon, and I can tell you that secondary schools that are used to bolster this account this program, they get their results by offering what this government says are second-class qualifications. So that is the first piece of intellectual dishonesty. The second thing is that they say they're in, they're in favour of giving parents power and encouraging the big society. But when parents, like the ones in this school, say what they want to do, how they want to develop their local community and their society, they're told they can't do it. That, so that is basically dishonesty. by the Secretary of State via a funding agreement. They don't actually have autonomy. But the academies that are in chains, and I'm afraid that is the fate that will befall this school, if, if you don't win your judicial review and this campaign doesn't succeed, are effectively wholly owned subsidiaries of corporate organisations that call themselves charities. Um, they're, they're, you, you, they have identical curricula, identical management styles, all the money is siphoned off from the school by the, the academy chain headquarters who then incidentally a lot of them pay themselves very hefty salaries as a result of that. And the schools have very little freedom at all. So that's basically dishonest too. And I think this is all really not about, uh, as Christina said, it's not really about uh, school improvement. This is about getting as many schools as possible out of uh, the maintained sector, out of local authority hands, because that would be the, the quickest route to get to the, in, into the hands of private sector companies if the Tories win the next election on their own next time out. trying to sell me services, offering to run the school, because there's a lot of money that's going to be made out of this in the longer term. Uh, so in the next few years, we're going to see a very complex web of organisations running our schools, and you're right to resist them. I just want to make two final points, though. You must be very careful not to be always talking about what we're against, but to talk about what we're for. We are for school improvement, with good local schools. And we're for local authorities having a role in good local schools, whether they're uh, planning places, <coughs> managing fair funding, managing exclusions and admission. Those are crucially important points, and in, in time, this government will be forced to admit that. 
Um, the second thing is um, that we believe in new schools. There is a need for new schools in some areas, but they don't have to be academies and free schools. They can be maintained schools. And I think it's very, very wrong that Gove will not allow you to even explore other options of remaining a maintained school, becoming a cooperative or whatever. It proves that he's not really interested in what parents want. Um, and we're for local accountability and transparency. And there is no transparency in the way this, this process is being managed, as far as I can see. The schools are either parachuted in from on high, or else go make a decision behind closed doors about who will run your school. So you are, the, you are actually at the, at the forefront of a very important vanguard at the moment, because what happens here, I think, will dictate the future progress of this academy's And that's why I'm here tonight. I want to wish you very, very good luck, and I'll be with you all the way. Thank you.